Welcome back. If we go to our interfaces and check the current interface listing, so we have Ether 1, Ether 2 down to Ether 5. But if you scroll below, we have this LO or the type is a loopback. A loopback interface provides a stable and consistent IP address for a router independent of the state of any physical interfaces. So your Ether1, Ether2, Ether5 are your physical interfaces and your loopback interface L0 you could consider it as a logical or a virtual interface. A loopback interface could serve as a management interface allowing administrators to access the device for configuration and monitoring regardless of the status of physical interfaces. Rather than monitoring one of the physical interface, so as long as there is one running or remaining running interface or physical interface, so we could monitor or ping to the loopback IP address. In our upcoming videos, the loopback interface IP address could be used as the router ID in the routing protocols such as OSPF and PGP, ensuring the router can always be identified even if the physical interfaces go down. In the upcoming videos, so if we go to routing or OSPF, then BGP, then we have this router ID, so main with this dynamic ID so routing OSPF for example instances if we click new you'll have the router ID so we could have our loopback IP address as our router ID in several firmware versions ago for example version 6.49.7 so if you go to interfaces and we take a look at our interface, if we scroll down or we don't even have a scroll, we don't have a loopback type. So we don't have the LO interface. Back in our version 6, if we wanted to have a loopback interface, so we simply go to the bridge and create a bridge without any member ports. And from that bridge, we will then assign an IP address to point to that bridge. Back in our version 7.19, so we can go to IP addresses. And from here, we could click new and let's type in the IP address of our loopback interface. R1 will have the loopback address of 172.31.100.1 so let's type it in so 172.31.100.1 slash 32 so that will be the assigned loopback interface ip address of r1 router so click apply click ok and we should have an added ip address already on our R1's address list, so you have for Ether2, Ether3, and the loopback interface. We are at our router 2 this time, so we can have an IP address print to list down the IP addresses that were configured. So we have Ether1 and Ether3, we don't have anything for loopback interface. Again, so make sure the loopback interface is just enabled. So if you go to interfaces, you scroll down to your loopback type, double click, and as long as the enable checkbox is OK, so you're good to go. Of course, you could rename your loop interface, but for us, you'll stay put for this. So click OK, and we are ready to put in the IP address of our loopback interface. In the interest of time, so I've typed in the command, so forward slash IP address at base address equals the loopback address 172.31.100.2 slash 32. So that 2 because it's R2 space interface equals LO, which is your loopback interface, then disabled equals no. And let's hit enter. So it's accepted. And let's up arrow to print. 
and there you go you now have a loopback interface IP if you try to ping the other routers loopback address for example router 2 is dot 2 172.31.100.2 and I'll try to ping 172.31.100.1 which we have configured just recently the router 1's loopback address so if we enter so we have no route to host if we ping the loopback address of the R1 router. However, if we ping the directly connected physical interface, for example, on our Ether1, we are 10.100.12.2. So the other side is that one, which is our R1. So we are R2. If we press enter, so we have a reply. So we still need to do routing on our loopback interface and we will settle it in our future videos. So whether static route or we could go directly to dynamic routing which is for example OSPF. So in the interest of time, so we have done R1 and R2. So we have seven routers to go. So we will just configure it at the background. So for R3 to R9, so their loopback addresses. So we need to settle all the IP addresses that are needed for network connectivity and the loopback interface as well before we will start the routing protocol such as OSPF.